users. 
want to know why he decided to eat these dead animals because again we know that serial killers have had tendencies to cause harm to small animals but it's not necessarily common to then eat them and so the reason for that is because Richard was, was under the delusion that his heart was shrinking again that hypochondriac part really coming in to play and in his mind the consumption of raw flesh and the drinking of an animal blood would be what would stop his heart from disappearing from his body altogether he believed this to such an extent that he once injected rabbit blood directly into his veins, which, if you can imagine, did not go well and sent him straight to the hospital. When Richard was 25 years old, he was committed as a paranoid schizophrenic to Beverly Manor Institute for the Mentally Insane. It is reported that antipsychotic medicines failed to work on him and may have even made him worse. This could have meant that his schizophrenia and psychosis may have actually been caused by the drugs that he had previously consumed rather than there being a true like chemical problem in his brain one day nurses at the beverly manor institute in sacramento found richard with blood around his mouth and they and they discovered two dead and mutilated birds outside his window that he had lured for capture. It's quite clear that Richard suffered from a mental disorder early on in his life, brought on by the physical abuse and his humiliation. He may have also been suffering from what is called Renfield Syndrome, which is a form of clinical vampirism. After two stints inside the psychiatric hospitals, he would be released in 1976 after somehow being deemed no longer a risk to society. But as you can likely imagine, this team of people that let him roam free could not have been more wrong about him. At this time, he was able to move into another apartment in the city and basically picked up right where he had left off. He restarted trapping cats and dogs to kill and consume. Now, all of this was only a few years before he would kill his human victims and drink their blood in a misconstrued belief that he was actually keeping himself alive. He had a belief that Nazis had carried out invasive experiments on him, causing him to physically need the blood. So he had, again, many, many delusional thoughts going on for him. And ultimately, Richard's name was to become synonymous with the term of the serial killer. His monstrous crimes are still talked about, discussed, and used as a basis for television shows to this very day. On the 29th of December in 1977, Richard would kill Ambrose Griffin, a 
51-year-old engineer. After a shopping trip, Ambrose returned to his car to get the last of the items. When his wife had stepped back outside, she saw her husband on the ground next to the grocery bags. Richard had shot him twice, and this would only be the beginning of his killings. One month later, on the evening of the 23rd of January, 1978, Richard attempted to break into a house at 2909 Bernice Street. When a neighbor approached him, he stopped, lit a cigarette, stared at her, and casually walked away. And that same night, he would break into a house along the street, but was interrupted by the owners, and he ran off, but not before smearing his excrement on some of their belongings. He would then move on down the street to 2360 Dioga Way and casually walked into the home of the Wallen family. He bumped into Teresa Wallen as she was taking out the garbage and tragically shot her three times. He would drag her corpse to the bedroom, leaving a blood trail through the house. And then he would have sex with her corpse while stabbing her multiple times with a kitchen knife. Richard then proceeded to carve off her left nipple and cut her torso open below the sternum. He removed her spleen and intestines, cut out her kidneys, and sliced her pancreas in half. He then placed the kidneys back inside of her body as if they were one organ. He used a yogurt pot to scoop up the blood from inside of her body and drink it. He would then rub her blood over his face and neck. Before he left the house, Richard had gone into the garden, picked up some dog feces, and pushed it into her throat and mouth. Now, as you can imagine, the extreme brutality of the Walling murder was a shock not just to California, but the entirety of the United States. The media got wind of the story, and as the killer seemed to have a fascination with drinking blood, this is when Richard earned the dubious title of the Vampire of Sacramento. Four days after Teresa Wallen's murder, and just one mile from the Wallen house, the Maroth family would suffer a similar, if not a worse, fate. Richard entered the Maroth residence and shot dead a family friend named Danny Meredith. Richard would steal his wallet and car keys before completely rampaging through the home. During this, he would shoot and kill 38-year-old Evelyn Marath, her 6-year-old son Jason, and her 22-month-old nephew David Ferreira. Like as he did with Teresa, he had sex with Evelyn's corpse, cut her open, and took some of her organs out before 
drinking her blood direct from the body. And so, clearly, his desire for cannibalism and now necrophilia had left nothing to the imagination. Now, what I find interesting is that the investigation moved forward very quickly because Richard never really tried to hide what he had done. Evidence was easy to come by, and when they searched his apartment, they really found everything they needed to charge him. Everything in Richard's kitchen was blood-stained from the fridge to the glassware. One container had pieces of brain fragments and others had small pieces of bone within them. His electric blender had never been cleaned and contained a mixture of blood from numerous animals. Before Richard's trial, it was claimed that when they tried to extract a blood sample from him, that he virtually turned into an animal and fought back like crazy. But ultimately, he was charged with six counts of murder in the first degree, and it was a trial that was to last four months during the course of 1978. On the 8th of May of 1979, after only a few hours, the jury returned the verdict of guilty of six counts of murder in the first degree. He was given the death penalty by gas chamber at San Quentin Prison in California. In his trial, his mother claimed that one day Richard appeared on her doorstep with a dead cat. She reported that he smiled, threw the cat to the ground, and ripped it open with his bare hands. Then he smeared the animal's blood all over his neck and face. But in what to me is even almost more bizarre than what he did, his mother never reported this incredibly bizarre behavior. She literally just let it go. Richard would give a series of bizarre interviews in which he spoke of his fear of Nazis and UFOs. In one of his delusions, he believed he had been secretly killed by a combination of both reanimated and forced to kill others in order to keep himself alive. One of the interviewers was FBI agent Robert Ressler, and Richard asked him for a radar gun so that he could capture the Nazi UFOs and bring them to justice for the murders. His delusions would also lead him to believe that his blood was turning to powder and that he needed blood from other creatures to replenish it as his heart was shrinking. He was to begin an appeal on the basis that he was only killing to preserve his own life. But needless to say, that Richard would go on to become the poster boy for a paranoid, schizophrenic serial killer and the type of killer your parents would warn you about before you went to sleep. He was also feared by other prisoners due to the incredibly violent nature of his crimes. On the day after Christmas, the 26th of December in 1980, a guard found him dead in his cell at San Quentin Prison. He had committed 
suicide with an overdose of antidepressants that he had collected and saved. And interestingly enough, when Richard's body was autopsied, it was found that his heart had been in perfectly healthy condition. And the only thing that was unwell and not functioning properly in his body was his brain. That concludes the case of the vampire of Sacramento, California. Please let me know what your thoughts on this case and I will see you tomorrow for our 13th and final video of the 13 days of Halloween. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and until next time.